so in this problem here, we have a circle of radius 1. Right? And it's, uh, it's got a point that's halfway along a radius. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a radius here. That's a radius of my circle. This is a point exactly halfway across it, right there. And what we want to do is we want to create a cut across this. It's going to be uh, perpendicular to this radius. Right, so a cut that's nice and perpendicular to this radius, something like that, such that that spot right there is the centroid of the top segment. Right, so this is a segment of a circle. We call this a segment of a circle. And we want to we want to find uh, the the value of this distance here that I'm going to call a. Right, so we call that distance a, and I want to find the value of a such that this point at one half, uh, sorry, zero comma one half, zero comma one half is going to be the centroid for this circle. And this is, you know, you can think of this as a unit circle if you want, right? So we've got that uh, y equals the square root of one minus x squared. Standard stuff when you're dealing with unit circles, especially since we're dealing with the top half of the unit circle. In fact, let me go ahead and erase the bottom half completely since it is completely unnecessary for everything that we're going to do. Okay. So I hope you can tell that by symmetry, we do not need to calculate x bar. It would be kind of a waste of time. And you could, you could find that out really, really fast if you went to go um, plug in the formula for x bar. Um, the, the formula for x bar is an odd function on a symmetric interval. It, it comes out to zero. Um, and just by symmetry alone, we already know that x bar is going to equal zero. So don't need to worry about that. We, we really just need to worry about y bar. Like, we actually know where y bar is, right? Well, x bar was zero, that's kind of useless. Y bar on the other hand is at one half, not so useless. Um, though I guess the fact that x bar is at zero is entirely, I don't know, that's a whole different branch of the problem. You can do this in a bunch of different ways. Okay, but I wanted to calculate y bar. I wanted to do this with y bar because it turns out to be a really easy calculation if you use y bar. So let's look, the, look at the formula for y bar. y bar, is equal to 1 over 2 times a times the integral from a to b, which we can calculate. Um, and this is going to be of f of x squared minus g of x squared dx. Right. So, uh, f of x, what's that going to be? Well, that's the top curve, right? We actually already have it written down right there. g of x, what's that going to be? Well, we actually already know that as well. That's going to be y equals a. So I guess if you want to think this is going to be f of x and y equals a is g of x, a constant function. So there we, we already have that, so that's easy enough. Okay, so where's the difficulty in this? There. <laughs> How do you calculate a? Um, the area of the segment is not really a trivial task, though it is fairly easy to do, and this is how we're going to do it. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and redraw this picture slightly bigger. So we're, this is mainly just to calculate A. Again, the actual centroid calculation itself is pretty easy, which we're going to be able to do in a moment here. Let me go ahead and draw half of a circle. Right, and then I'm going to cut my circle to create a segment. So this is going to be where my center was, and I get these little, those are radii coming out from my center, going to these points of intersection with my cut and the rest of my circle. And of course, the height here is A. And since we're dealing with a unit circle specifically, we actually know those radii are 1. Um, and so right away, we can actually get this point right here, if you want it is the square root of 1 minus a squared, comma, whatever y is supposed to be there. I'm not actually going to calculate the y, but like that's x equals one, uh, square root of 1 minus a squared. Uh, yeah, we don't need the y. The y is not important. So x equals the square root of 1 minus a squared there. And of course, then that's the negative version. OK, so that takes care of a and b. We actually know our bounds of integration now. But we still don't know the area. How do we get that area? Well, here's the trick. Um, notice that we have a circular sector, right? A sector of a circle is what you get when you sort of cut out like an arc. 
of a circle, like this is a big old wedge, right? So you've got a big old wedge of a circle. That's a circular sector. We can take the circular sector, so the area of the segment that we're looking for, which is like that, right? That's going to be the area of the sector minus the area of this equilateral triangle that we have floating down underneath. Right. So, um, in fact, let me go ahead and erase the letter A. We can just use this, this segment shape. It's cooler. Okay, so the segment is equal to the sector minus the triangle. Okay, we can actually calculate the areas of each of these in terms of A. It turns out to be not terrible to do. Um, for instance, uh, the triangle. The triangle is pretty easy. We actually can already get the area of the triangle, right? Um, we have that this length, this base, base of the triangle is 2 times the square root of 1 minus a squared. And so multiply that by a and 1 half, and you're going to get that this is already going to be a times the square root of 1 minus a squared. So already we have the area of that triangle. Now what about the area of this big dude here? Well, um, you need to remember the area for a sector. In a sector, um, when you take its area, uh, it's usually with regards to theta. Um, in this case, r is 1, so I'm not going to bother with the radius part. Um, it's going to be theta over 2 times r squared. But in our case, r is 1. So literally, the area of the sector is just theta over 2. Whoa. OK, so what is theta over 2 then? Well, if I can draw your attention to half of this equilateral triangle here, you know, it looks like a, like this, maybe. Right, that's half that triangle. It says A right here. This is theta over 2. That's theta over 2 right there. Right, that's going to give us the area. Um, if we can figure out what that angle is, we know that this is 1, and that's pretty much all you need, right? Because we know that the cosine of theta over 2 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is just a. And if cosine of theta over 2 is equal to a, then theta over 2 is the arc cosine of a. And so this piece right here just ends up being arc cos of a, subtract a times the square root of 1 minus a squared. And congratulations, you just found the area of your circular segment parametrized by that height a right there. Whew, what a big deal. Oh my goodness. Okay, now we need to go back up to this integral here. We need to actually evaluate this integral. So we have a over here. Let me go ahead and um, actually, we're going to put this up here in the corner. a is equal to arc cosine of little a minus a square root 1 minus a squared. Okay. Neato. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and calculate this integral, which is really, really easy to do, thankfully. Okay, so let's let's see if we can do that. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and erase most of this. We already have the area up there. We know our bounds of integration. If you can't remember them, just go back a few minutes in the video. You can find them. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug everything that we know in here. I'm going to leave my a alone a little bit for now. Um, but we get, uh, you know, 1 over 2a. And then we're going to get the integral. And this is going to be from the negative square root of 1 minus a squared to the positive square root of 1 minus a squared. And um, then we're going to get f of x squared. So that's 1 minus x squared. minus g of x squared, which is going to be minus a squared. We're doing that dx. Cool. OK, so um, that's a bit ugly, but we can clean it up. Notice that the only variable that we have in this entire expression is x squared. And that's an even power of x, which means we have an even function for our integrand. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up using that even function on a symmetric interval. Rule. So this is going to be equal to 2 over 2a, which is 1 over a, the integral from 0 to the square root of 1 minus a squared. 
And this is going to be 1 minus a squared minus x squared dx. Just grouping my constants so that I can keep my constants together. It makes life a little bit easier later on. Okay, well, there we go. All we got to do now is, uh, is do the integral, which is very easy to do. Uh, this is going to be equal to 1 over a times 1 minus a squared x minus 1 third x cubed. And we're going to be evaluating this from 0 to the square root of 1 minus a squared. Okay, so far so good. Now notice that when you plug in zero, you just get zero, which is great. That all goes to zero. Okay, so then we just need to plug in the square root, <coughs> excuse me, the square root of one minus a squared. Um, and when I do that, I'm actually gonna get uh, some really nice things occurring. This is gonna equal, coming down here to the bottom, one over a times, and what do we get? So we get one minus a squared times the square root of 1 minus a squared. You can combine those to make 1 minus a squared to the 3 halves minus 1 third times the square root of 1 minus a squared cubed, which also turns out to be 1 third times 1 minus a squared to the 3 halves. Okay, close off my brackets there. Getting a little bit cramped here. I'm probably going to start erasing up here. Okay, well that's great because these are like terms, right? This is one minus one third times the same variable quantity. Um, it's just gonna be two thirds times one minus a squared all to the three halves. So where should I start erasing? How about right here? Okay, so coming back up now, we're gonna have uh, two thirds, or I guess two over three a, times one minus a squared to the power of three halves. Okay, that's our centroid. And let me go ahead and we're gonna plug in a now, like the actual formula for a. So this is gonna be equal to two times one minus a squared to the power of three halves, all divided by three times the quantity of the arc cosine of a minus a times the square root of one minus a squared. Close parentheses. Whew, okay, this thing right here is supposed to equal y bar, right? That's supposed to equal the y coordinate for our centroid on this picture. Um, and we actually know y bar. We were actually given that at the very beginning of the problem. It was the first piece of information we were told. This is equal to one half. Okay, so now it's just a simple act simple, of solving for a. We have an equation here, single equation, single variable, solve for a. What the heck is a equal to? Now, that is easier said than done. Um, and so uh, in order to do that, you really kind of need to use like some sort of computer system like Desmos or something like that. Um, and what it really ends up boiling down to is, uh, well, I don't have my phone with me and I forgot the number off the top of my head. So I'll post the answer in the, the comments below or the description below so you guys can see. But, but essentially what you would do now is you just plug this equation in. You'd set like A, maybe even call AX or something like that in Desmos. Plug this into Desmos and then maybe plug Y equals one half into Desmos. Look where the intersection is. Congratulations, whatever that X coordinate is. That's the value of a that you're looking for. Um, and if I remember correctly, it was pretty small, like 0.138, if I, I think. I, th I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, maybe you can, but I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so something like that. Put some question marks, just, just to be safe on the safe side. But yeah, that, that's the idea. So once you get to here, the, the rest is pretty much just using computer systems uh, to solve it. You, you cannot do this by hand. I, I don't think it's possible. Um, it's pretty much probably impossible. So um, that, that's how you get it, and then that's the answer. So there we go.